mastering, I think I have a picture in here of it. Yep. If you turn about two, three pages down, this is your picture. You can get rid of this off the board. These are your posturing. Now, let's look at each one because what did I say about a head injury? I said they are a spinal cord injury until proven otherwise. So when you come to this patient or they come into you, they'll have a certain amount of posture if they're really bad. Anyway, uh, this little three people, if you look at the first one, it's the least of your, it's not as bad as the others. Decorticate. I want you to remember that your fists are turned towards the core of your body. Decorticate. When it comes to decerebrate, your, and this is literally a quote, your elbows are extended and your fists turn to the external part of the body. A lot of E's in there. Extension of the elbows. This is the worst posturing on the page. My husband had a 15 year old who overdosed on heroin. When he got him that morning, he had already been there that night. My husband said he, he came in to do rounds. He was in the decorticate position, 15 years old, this one. He said, I come back from lunch. He's in the cerebrate. And of course he died later that afternoon. Because again, he's getting worse. Decorticate is basically cervical injury. Decerebrate is brain stem injury. Flaccid is neurogenic shock, which means the same thing as spinal shock. Flaccid is neurogenic shock slash spinal shock. When you do the flaccid picture, think of it this way. No neuro, no muscles. That's what you write on the flaccid guy. No neuro, no muscles. No neuro, no muscles. Don't you need um, a muscle to control your heart rate, everybody? Okay, so you need muscles to have a blood pressure. You need muscles to have a heart rate. You need muscles to breathe. You need muscles for all kind of shit. So this patient ain't got shit. Seriously. All vital signs low. That's what you're going to write. All vital signs low. No neuro, no muscle. Whatever the temperature of the room, that's the temperature of your patient. Called ambient temperature. Whatever the temperature of the room, that's the temperature of your patient. No neuro, no muscle, all vital signs low. What about bowel sounds? Absent. What about reflexes? Absent. They either incontinent or they're going to have uh, bladder retention, urinary retention. They either can't let it out or they can't hold it in because there ain't no muscles. Okay, so you know that this is important. This guy is the typical spinal cord injury and the worst spinal cord injuries of all time, and nothing has changed since they came out and they were, they were created, is motorcycle. Nothing, in nothing, nothing shit changed, it's still the worst. Uh, now, no matter which one of these guys you get, if they're at the scene, whatever position they're in, it doesn't matter. If it's a head injury and they at least have a pulse, don't move them, we told you, immobilize them. And then what you're doing is, you're trying to put rolled up towels on the side of the neck so they don't do anything with their neck. When the ambulance comes, they're going to put them on a backboard and take their forehead. If this guy is a motorcycle accident, don't take his helmet off. 
never take their hat off. Hard hat, helmet, football helmets. If you've ever seen a football game, which I've seen plenty of them, I'm still a diehard Browns fan. These, this guy has this injury on the field, and I don't know if you really paid attention, the whole crowd says nothing. They're all silent, they're praying, because we all know how bad this could get. So the crowd is silent, there's people around, they're not moving him. They're waiting to see if he can get up on his own or move on his own. When he doesn't, you get carried off, but you get carried off on a, on a headboard. Okay, I miss my good. Okay, so you know this. Now, I want to say some things. So I said the corticate was not as bad as decerebrate. Decerebrate is the worst one of all. Flaccid is what we see with the spinal cord injury that's really bad. And it's usually, you know, pretty serious. It is the first thing we're going to see, even though this guy may walk tomorrow. It's just the first thing we see usually. Now, when the reflexes return, it doesn't mean they can walk. You're going to have spasms. Remember that. Spasms, hyperreflexia, is the next step after flaccid. It does not mean they can walk. Okay. So you start off with flaccid, which is no neural, no muscle. Then you move to hyperreflexia. This is when, look at the drugs. This is when you're going to need baclofen. Maybe even dantrolene because there's painful muscle spasms. Painful muscle spasms. Baclofen, dantrolene, or painful muscle spasms in your spinal cord injury or head injury that really is a spinal cord injury. Okay, now this patient who may have started as a head injury but now is considered both spinal cord injury and head injury. This patient, because there's no neuro, there's no muscle, and because there's no muscle, the heart is a muscle, and because the heart is not really doing what it's supposed to do because there's no neuro, then you may need three things done very quickly. Number one, dopamine. Dopamine will raise the blood pressure Flaccid. Mm -hmm. Flaccid. Only flaccid. Make sure you only write near flaccid or you're going to be real confused. Are you writing near flaccid? Okay, oh, then. I know that. I'm looking at you right near some bush. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. So I'm watching all my babies because this is when I lose y'all. Y'all get tired. Okay, so with flaccid, you need to remember dopamine for the blood pressure, atropine for the heart rate. Because if you don't have a heart rate, it's going to cardio, right? So atropine, dopamine for the blood pressure. Steroids within eight hours. What kind of steroids? Well, I put two on the board, Decatron and Solumetrol. Did you guys learn either one of those? Which one did you learn? There you go. That's the IV version. IV Solumetrol has to be given within eight hours of the injury. Not eight hours of admission, eight hours of the injury. Okay. Your patient is going to be a total and complete care. So you know if they ain't got no neural, no muscle, their eyes are dry, they may need a ventilator. They're at risk for foot drop. To prevent foot drop, you need to do a little passive range of motion. Have the patient wear tennis shoes in the bed, right? High top tennis shoes. You need to make sure you put washcloths in the hands. You need 
DBT prophylaxis. So sometimes this guy has to get Lovenox. Progressive mobilization. That's all your care. Progressive mobilization. Stool softeners. NG to suction. If there's no gag reflex and they don't have one if they're flaccid. So NG to suction. If it's a head injury, can you do an NG? No. Jermaine Dawson, one of your classmates who graduated already, he showed me a picture where the stupid nurse had put the NG through the nose and it coiled in the brain because it was a hole all the way through. Yeah, it was an injury, it was a TBI, you don't know. So yeah, it coiled up in the brain. You can see it on the MRI, it's like, oh fuck. Okay, so no NG for head injuries. Use an OG instead, oral gastric tube. No NG, OG instead. Because here's reality. If you were to take your finger, which you wouldn't, but if you could, and you could take your little pinky finger, which is about the only one that'll fit through your nose, and you just kept going until it stopped, it's not going to stop. It's going to go to the pituitary. So that's what you got to remember. Okay, because your pituitary is straight back off the nose, to the middle of your head. All right, anyway, uh, Ted Hose, anti embolic stockings. High fiber. You got to weigh this guy every three days. Don't forget I said baclofen and dantrolene. Baclofen more so than anything. Now what happened when the ambulance came with him on the backboard, y'all? We the nurse, what do we do? He's coming from the ambulance, he's in the stretcher, he's on the backboard still. He's got his forehead taped to the board and he has a cervical collar on. What am I the nurse gonna do? Transfer him on the backboard. Yeah, you gotta take the backboard with you. Important. Not only that, you don't really do much other than wait on x ray, MRI, and CAT scan, which will all be done relatively fast. Because you can't do much with these people. If you tried to put them on a mask of oxygen, you're moving his head. So, CAT scan, MRI, x ray, three biggest priorities of the nurse taking care of this guy. CAT scan, MRI, x-ray. Okay, because then we'll know what, what the injury is. 